Praise the Lord, my brothers and sister. It's Sister Judy coming again. And today I'm going to start to do the heavens. I might have to do the heavens in two video. So let me see how far I go with this one. And today we are going to take a look. For me to do the heavens, I'm going to do it from the sanctuary. I'm going to do it from the, the tabernacle of Jesus. And we are going to be looking at how it ties in today with we as Christian going up into the third dimension. Now the sanctuary, we all know it consists of three main parts. The courtyard, which we can do reading from Exodus 20. 7 19 to 13 and then we have the holy place and the most holy place exodus 26 33 in the courtyard where the altar of burnt offering we can find that in exodus 27 1 to 8 the lava for washing exodus 30 18 to 21 and the sanctuary building the courtyard the fence so when we look at the courtyard, the burnt offering, and the lava, we find that in the first dimension. When we go up into the holy place, all that is in the holy place, we'll find the table of showbread, the seven candlestick, branch of candlestick, and the altar of incense. Now, I'm going to be concentrating on the second level today the second dimension which is the holy place and the reason why i want to do the holy place is for we all for us all to understand what this mean as we go through the heaven now in the holy place we have three pieces of furniture furniture the table of showbread, which is in Exodus 25, 23 to 30, which represent dependence on God for physical and spiritual food. It points to Jesus, the living bread. And we can also look at 1 Corinthians 11, 23, 24. The seven branches of candlesticks, Exodus 25, 31 to 40. The light which represent the word of God. Psalms 119, 105. And, and you can also look at John 9, 5. And the oil represent the Holy Spirit, which we can find that in Zechariah 4, 1 to 6, and Revelation 4, 5. Now the altar of incense, which is Exodus 31 to 9 represent the prayer of God people. And we can find that in Psalms 141, 2, Revelation 5, 8. Now, the reason why I'm telling you what these represent, like the seven branch of candlestick, the showbread, and the incense, because once we start to walk with God, we will realize when we are in the second dimension, we now come to the understanding of the Word of God. We have the Holy Spirit and we have the incense where we pray, the altar to pray. And it's a reason why in the second dimension we have these three pieces of furniture. Now in each level in the heaven you have three places. And for each places, you have to make a sacrifice to go over. Meaning, God is going to tell you what you need to do for you to move from the spot that you are standing. So in the second dimension, you have the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth place. So if you're standing where the showbread is, that will be the fourth place where you have 
the seven branches of candlesticks. That's the fifth place. And where you have the incense, the altar of incense, that's the sixth place. Very tricky right here. Because above the sixth place, this is where we will find principalities, powers, and ruler hanging out. Right here is very tricky. This is where Satan has his throne in the highest spot in the heaven. Now, once we reach here, we have to be totally obedient when God is talking to us. Because once he tells us what we need to do, we have to do it. And this is where I'm going to show you how you will be able to recognize people that are in the third heaven from people that are not in the third heaven. There is a lot of people talking about the third heaven, but they are not in the third heaven. And the reason why I am going to give it to you so you can understand it, because in these days, in these days, God is removing the, the, the blindfold of people's eyes because he wants you to understand where people are at, where we are standing, and where there is a lot of false teacher teaching that they're in the third heaven and they are not there because there are certain things that cannot enter into the third dimension and i'm going to show you i'm going to do an analogy from genesis 35 and i'm going to focus on genesis 35 from verse 1 to verse 5 let me read that for you and god said unto jacob arise Go up to Bethel and dwell there and make thee an altar unto God that appear unto thee when thou fleest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garment and let us arise and go up to Bethel. And I will make thee an altar unto God, whom answer me in the days of my distress, and was with me, and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hands, and all their erring which were in their ears, and Jacob hide them under the oak which was by she Shem. And the journey and the terror of God was up in the city that were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. Now you can continue, read it. But the reason why I'm going to show you something about when we are entering into the third dimension, things that we cannot do, and things that we have to put away, and people that are teaching it and are not doing what God is saying, we are going to find ourselves in serious, serious problem. Now, as I start the lesson and I was looking at it, I first, the Lord first told me I need to pay close attention to Mount Hermon. Now, we're going to look at the two. You'll find this mostly if you have ever done the reading of... Um, in the book of um, Enoch, where there we had 200 angels that came down. These are the fallen one. They came down and Mount Hermon, they bound together in a hoat to go in against the women of God on the hurt. And we all know what happened when they went in to the women that they started to have giant. But there was one angel that the Lord wanted me to play pay close attention to, it was the angel Asiel. Asiel was one who taught the women how to do makeup. 
So when you're going to fight a spirit, you must know the strong hold. You must know the strong man. So most people going after the spirit of Jezebel, but what they don't realize, you cannot fight Jezebel unless you take out Asiel, the, the strong fallen angel Asiel. He was the one who taught the women makeup because he had an agenda for this last days with women wearing makeup. Now, we see these, and most people go after it, talking about the spirit of Jezebel. This has nothing to do with Jezebel now. This has to do with one of the fallen one who came down and taught this thing unto the women. How to paint their face and how to do things because it is coming down right down to this days that we are living in. Why he did what he did. They also taught mankind charm. They taught him about the plant, enchantment, and so on as we go on. We will see why in the second heaven we are going to come up against all these things that we as God people that want to make it to Bethel. There are certain things that God is going to ask of us that we need to do. And this was why when God told Jacob, you need to go to Bethel, Jacob realized to go up to Bethel, that means he's going up to the mountain. You cannot carry any strange gods with you up into the mountain top. You have to put your gods off. God will not allow you to come over with your strange gods. Now, when you look in Genesis 31, I want you to realize something that if you go up with your strange God, we are going to have a spirit that will pursue us and we will find ourselves in problem. Now, when you look in Genesis 31, I want you to take a look at Laban. Laban pursue after Jacob. And the reason why he could pursue after Jacob, it was because Rachel took the idol that belongs to her father without the knowledge of Jacob knowing that she had stolen away idol from her father and had it in the presence of God people. Now, when you look at this, after Laban pursued, when Laban realized that his idol was stolen, he now went after Jacob. But as he was pursuing after Jacob, because God knew Jacob was innocent, Jacob had no knowledge that Rachel had stolen this idol. God met Laban in a dream and told Laban, speak, good, speak not good nor bad, or God warned him, do nothing to Jacob, because Jacob has nothing to do with what you are pursuing after. He weren't pursuing after Jacob because Jacob took the kids and move away. He was very upset for the idol that was stolen and he didn't know it was stolen by his daughter Rachel. So when he reached the camp where Jacob were and he asked Jacob where is his idol, Jacob told him he didn't take anything and Jacob told him he must go in and search everybody tent and whosoever he found it with, kill them. They must die. But we can see that Laban went through, but he did not find it in any one camp. When he came onto Rachel camp, that was the only camp that did not search thoroughly. Because Rachel sit on the idols and Rachel lie that she was on that time of the month where she's not supposed to get up. So Rachel know what she was doing. But remember now, Jacob already pronounced that anyone that is found with the idol will die. So this was why going up to Shechem, he, every man would have to leave their gold. Now, when I start to look at this, I realize 
that Shechem is a place of decision. So when we come into the heaven and we are at the fourth spot, God is going to tell us what we need to do. There is a sacrifice that God will tell us what we need to do. In these days, a sacrifice doesn't mean killing an animal, shedding blood. But I'm going to tell you how you will know. Whatsoever God asks you to give up, you are going to feel it. This is not something that you want to get rid of. This is not something you want to do. But because God knows that is something that makes sense or something that is very... Uh, how would I put it? Something that you love dearly. God is going to take the best or he's going to ask you to give up the best thing you have. You're going to know what it is because you're going to feel it when he tells you to give it up. So once you reach those part that you have to make a decision, there will be a decision at the shore, <clears throat> the table of shorebread. There is going to be a decision at the seven candlestick. Now, because you have the word and you have the anointing. Now, when you go to pray, when you reach the altar of incense, God is going to tell you this is where you're going to have the most difficult decision to make. This one burns. This one it's not something you want to do, but it's going to be something God is telling you to do because you cannot go over into the third dimension unless you do what God is telling you to do. So when I look at Shechem, I see it as a place of decision. I would call there the third place in the second heaven. Where nothing strange can pass there. So God is going to tell you that you have to give up your goals, your jewel, all those things. God is going to tell you, you have to get rid of them. You, and you have to change your garment. You cannot go up into the third heaven looking a certain way. You cannot be adorned in certain things. God will not allow it. When you are going to go into the third heaven, you cannot have anything that was given by Asiel, the fallen angel. So this is where now we have to examine ourselves. Am I in a garment coming from the Babylonian kingdom? Am I wearing anything that was given unto the fallen angel. Am I associating myself with anything that is coming from the spirit of Jezebel? Now the things that Jezebel have were the gifts that Hayab gave unto her. And Jezebel also teach the women of Israel how to adorn themselves with these gifts this is not something you see sometimes we might hear don't do this don't do that and we don't know why but it's because of the spirit that is associated with the spirit of jezebel which is also tied in with the fallen one asiel nothing that asiel gave will be able to go into the third dimension now, I want you all to look at what God is saying, because you cannot be teaching the third heaven. You are not in the third heaven. There is a place in the second dimension, which is an illusion that the devil created for people to think that they had made it into the third heaven, but they are not there. It's the way we see people now on on taking pictures like on Instagram, Google, and they're using these illusion places. Like they would say, I was at this fall, I was at this ski resort, and they're taking pictures and they're loading these pictures and people are saying, oh my God, these people have money. They can go here, they can go there. But God is saying, no, 
This is the false illusion that is created in the second dimension that most people are caught up in and is thinking that they're in the third dimension, but they are not in the third dimension yet. We have in the third dimension at the sixth level, we have spirit, the familiar spirit. We have the psychic. We have the witches. We have the warlock. We have the familiar spirit. We have people that dwell right there that can hear 99% of what is coming down. Because in the second dimension, you have some of God people right there that God is trying to bring over into the third dimension. So God is channeling down to them information that he wants them to know what to do. And right there, it's where the familiar spirit can hear. They can hear some of what God is saying, but they are not hearing everything. And the point five that they are not hearing, it's the most dangerous part. Because they are going to say what is not so. And people are going to think that they are hearing because they are hearing 99% of what God is saying. But there is a point one that is very dangerous that they are not hearing. Because nobody that is in the third dimension, does not get caught up with a whole lot of things that you see. People that are in the second at the sixth, they are always caught up with other people going after them because down there is very crowded. And when you do not pass over, there is a lot of fight going on in that level. People coming after you, so you're, you're, you're running out of one, and you're running into another and you're asking yourself, why am I getting myself caught up in all of this? You're getting yourself caught up in all of this because you, there is a decision that you need to make. There is a decision. You're sitting on the fence. You're lukewarm. God is saying, take a side. Are you going to be hot or are you going to be cold before I spew you out? We need to know where we stand. And this is where most people get a false religion. They get a false ministry. They are not, they are not perfected by God yet. But because they do not want to do what God is telling them to do, you have false preacher, false prophet, false teacher. They go after people with the fivefold phone ministry. And they don't go after people who don't have a gift. They go after the ones that were gifted by God. So it's either you're going to obey God and he use the gift that he gives you, or you're going to go to the evil one and they are going to use the gift that God gives you to become a psychic. So they can feel things. They can hear a little, they can do a little. So the evil ones just mix them up and do what they want to do. Now I'm going to leave it here and I'm going to continue on part two as we go up into the third dimension. We cannot sit at the second dimension in this illusion thinking we are in the third heaven. You cannot go into the third heaven with nothing that is of ACL. So you need to do a research on who ACL the fallen angel was. Look at yourself. Ask yourself, do I have anything that is associated with one, anything from this fallen angel? And once you see that there is anything you have tied to you with this fallen angel, repent, give it up, clean yourself up, change your garment so God can continue to process you into the third heaven. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. This is Sister Judy again. Love you all. May God continually bless us. And may we be obedient that when he tries to move us up into this heaven, we will be able to go in according to his will and according to his purpose. God bless you all again. In Jesus' name, I say amen and amen and amen.